Welcome to Required Watching, where we watch films based on the lists of cinematic influencers and look at them through the lens of learning about filmmaking and how to move forward. I'm your host, Trey Epps, and today we're talking about nothing, nothing other, none other than the uh, 2019 Joker film starring Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, and when, when Joker was released in 2019, it sparked debates, both in the, about its portrayal of violence and the deep dive into the mind of one of the most infamous villains. This film was directed by Todd Phillips and Joker isn't just a comic book movie. It's a gritty character study that redefines how we see the clown prince of crime. But beyond the controversy lies a film rich in cinematic craft, one that is much about society as it is about the man who becomes the Joker. So let's get into it. Joker is an origin story, but unlike your typical comic book origin, there are no heroes or superpowers here. It's just a man, Arthur Fleck, who slowly unravels under the weight of broken society. Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal as Arthur Fleck is nothing short of a mesmerizing portrayal of a man who's just trying to live his life. His physical transformation alone, shedding weight to achieve his gaunt, fragile look, sets the tone of the character. Joaquin Phoenix's Arthur is a man beaten down by the world, living on the fringes of society, ignored, ridiculed, and abandoned. His spiral into madness is meticulously portrayed through every twitch, awkward laugh, and outburst showcasing Joaquin's masterful uh, uh, mastery of his craft. For me, I think that him being cast is rather perfect. And I think there was a lot of issues with him being cast. Uh, um, but he's a method actor. And I think and he's a great actor, despite his methods. Um, but thinking about the upcoming Joker film, I think what I love so much about his, about him generally, is that he's able to do something that I don't think a lot of actors do, which is make you feel sorry for him. I don't mean as Arthur Fleck. I mean, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix can make you can make you can knows how to humanize a character, um, uh, in it, whether it's a look. I'm not, I'm not even sure. Maybe maybe it's just a, his great acting, but I, you you often feel connected with 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 his characters, or at least I do. But back to the film. Um, this is one of. This is one of the most striking elements of Joker is the use of environment and cinematography and the way it reflects Arthur's uh, state of mind as Gotham is constantly being depicted as a city of ruin and how it's, or I guess the tale of two cities, hey, the city that is, is, is down for 90% while up for the others and up the others mean mainly um, uh, Thomas Wayne. Uh, uh, but as the world and the landscape is decaying, we see so does Arthur's mental state. And I think, I think it's uh, cinematographer Lawrence Schur who bathes the film in muted tones and shadows and creating this oppressive, claustrophobic atmosphere that feels both timeless and rooted in gritty realism of like the 70s and 80s. Of course, we wouldn't be able to get away with talking about this without talking about the influence of Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver and King of Comedy throughout, but Joker never feels like a simple homage. It carves its own path with its unique visual identity. Uh, I mean, even the, the score feels incredibly different and dark and, and textured in comparison to some of the other films in the in this universe of course it's standalone but i think we'd be remiss not to talk about not to talk about things that make it different i mean the the haunting cello compositions that echo arthur's loneliness and and, and instability and as the music swells constantly it intertwines so perfectly with joaquin phoenix's performance especially during scenes like uh, like the bathroom dance, that it elevates the film, I think, to a, a like to a, a visceral emotion and a visceral experience. 
I am unsurprised watching this again that the sequel is a musical or the sequel has a music in it or the sequel is a music film. The way music is embedded in both the character of Arthur Fleck and the Joker as well as, uh, as the film. It, it makes so much sense. I mean, the, the last lines of the film are, are sung. So it, it feels only right that we're able to see this movie off into its natural progression. And I say this as someone who was completely, and still is, haven't seen the film yet, still is completely hesitant on what Joker 2 is going to be. But in this movie, I think what sets Joker apart from the other films is that it focuses on the human nature. It focuses on psychology. It first focuses on the characters over the their abilities, superhuman or no. Um, this isn't a story about good versus evil. It's it's just a slow descent into the character that we already know. So it gives. It, I think it breathes new life in. Uh, into a character that, that we know can do crazy things, that will hurt people, that will kill, that doesn't care, and it recontextualizes it. And I think language that we can all speak as we watch our world uh, turn to crap sometimes. Uh, uh, and what it's like to descend into what maybe our surroundings have given us. But that's maybe me looking too much into it. Um, I think the way this film kind of portrays mental illness is is is, is raw and, and unflinching. And Arthur's downward spiral is triggered by his own experiences with poverty, self uh, social isolation, and systematic neglect, turning him into a sympathetic character. We learned that he uh, suffered abuse by his mom's boyfriend, and it had very little to do with him. Um, but we understand, I think, about three thirds into the movie, that this is the reason why he is why the why he is the way he is, and we get to see how each, honestly, each beat gives him more to do. Each beat pounds on him, and I must say, in the film, he says his story is a comedy and not a tragedy, and I I haven't read any interviews, but. Think of Aristotle and his versions and his definitions of what a tragedy is and what a comedy is. He's right. He's right. This is a comedy. Um, and you may not see that, but I'm going to ask you why you don't see that. And if you have any reasons why you think this isn't a comedy, without looking up what, I've, what I just said, let me know. Anyways, the tension builds in this film and it isn't, it explodes. In the second half, where, where Arthur really embraces this persona that was given to him. Um, and like I said, there's a, there's a buildup that rewards the patience of the audience. And we get some of the, we get not only the chilling transformations of this character, but we get to see some of the actions. We get to see where this is leading. And it's important to note that the violence is never glorified. Instead, it serves as a reflection of, of his fractious state of mind. And it's a commentary on how society ignores those who are suffering. And the film asks difficult questions. At what point does a man become a villain? And how much does that transformation, how much is that transformation due to their choices versus the world around them? Joker doesn't offer any answers. And I don't think it should. I think these are things that we need to ask ourselves as audience members, but it does invite the conversation. And I think as we make our films, as we make our films, it's important to, I think why, I think why this film hits very well is because of, it's because of that. It's because we're able to ask those questions uh, in a film and, and be left having to answer them. Cinema can be a tool to provoke, challenge, and explore difficult truths about the world and ourselves. And Joker shows us that even within the framework of a comic book movie, there's room for art that doesn't shy away from the moral ambiguity of soci sociological complexity. 
but I'll leave it there. This movie is an absolute masterclass in origin stories and just plain storytelling for our characters, original or IP. It redefines what a comic book story is while also giving us something new to hold on to, stripping away from the spectacle and focusing on internal. Uh, is this movie required? Well, absolutely. And if you thought I was gonna say anything different, then do we know each other? Um, and if we don't know each other, why don't you make a comment down below and introduce yourself. And uh, while you're there, recommend a movie and TV show that I should be watching and I'll add it to my list. And until next time, thank you so much.